Okay, we are up to 8 to 1, day 2. So let's dive in. So, now you're supposed to have somewhat of an idea of those crazy sinusoids. Sine, cosine, tangent, and the reciprocals. I left cotangent up here, and I left tangent up here, so that you can kind of see how you could use it, but not really. I don't know as a math teacher I'm supposed to say that. Um, but if you actually used a graphing calculator, um, you could do this perfectly using a track or tracer. But I'm going to give you the idea, and you'll have to grapple with the graphing calculator idea. So now they're saying, okay, here's cotangent of 0.5. Now what you guys are used to is you're used to uh, degrees. So you're used to like cotangent, or actually you're used to like potentially like, for example, this. That's clearly radians. Um, this is not clearly radians. What is that? Four degrees, four radians. Just so you know, this is radians, radians, radians. Now, how could you even think to use the graph to help yourself solve a problem like this? Well, I know your phones have cotangent on it. I know uh, these don't. So why? I don't know. It's a big mystery. We can send people to the moon, but we won't put cotangent on here. Or cosecant. Or secant. But anyways. So the problem is asking us, how do you find cotangent of 0.5? How? Well, again, what I'm about to show you, you can kind of put on the shelf, but I want to show you something. We know that cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So we, if we can find tangent of 0.5 radians, and, and don't forget, one radian is approximately 60 degrees. So 0.5 radians would be approximately 30 degrees. So what is tangent of approximately 30 degrees? Well, if we go over to our tangent graph, we know this is 45, so 30 would be right in here somewhere. And that would take us up in here somewhere. Um, why did I write 1.2? Uh-oh. Pause. I might have to redo this video. I don't know. All right. Rather than redo the video, I'm just going to own my mistake because we can learn from mistakes. When I saw this, I went ahead and I looked at one radian. I replaced this with 60 degrees. So I said, hey, let's find tangent of 60 degrees. So I went over to my graph. There's 45. 60 would be right about here. And I said, oh, that's about 1.2. That is wrong because it's not uh, 60. It's approximately 30. So that means I have to go just shy of 45 and go up here. And I'd say, well, and I'm just guessing. I'm saying that's like 0.6. So the cotangent, instead of 0.6 over 1, is 1 over 0.6, which is 6 tenths. And if I flip that, I get 10 6, which is 1 point, well, 1 and 2 thirds. And if we look at this graph, if we go 30 degrees on our cotangent graph, which is right about here, it says 1 and 2 thirds. Go right up here, which you know what? It makes sense. Now, all of that you can flush, but I just wanted to show you how the graphs kind of help us. But let's get rid of this so now you can breathe and let's actually talk about what we're supposed to do. Again, back to the fact that there is no cotangent button on your calculator. We are now going to first find tangent. 0.5 radians. So go to your calculator, go to the mode, make sure you go down, highlight radians, and then I'm clearing it out. And so now tangent of 0.5 radians, okay, it's fighting me. Tangent of 0.5 radians is 0.546. So if this is my answer to tangent, then cotangent of 0.5 must be this reciprocal. So that'd be 1 over 0.546. So 1 divided by 0.546, 1.83, approximately 1.83. All right, let's move on to secant. Well, first of all, we could use radians, 
But I'm going to go ahead and go, hey, you know what? That's the same thing as secant 45 times 3, 135 degrees. But if I do that, i got to go to my calculator, go back to degrees, and here we go. But what is secant the reciprocal of? It's the reciprocal of cosine. So if I find the cosine of 135 and flip it, it will tell me what secant is. So now that I'm in degree mode, 135, negative 0 0.707. So secant of 135 would have to be 1 over negative 0 0.707. Negative 1.41, approximately negative 1.41. Same thing over here, but now we're to radians. Yes, we can convert that to degrees, but I'm going to just take my calculator and choose radians. And now, what's the reciprocal of cosecant? Sine. So I'm going to find sine of four radians. And here we go. Negative 0.75. So that equals negative 0.75. Now, I always like to throw things in. Remember, 4 radians it would be times 60, would be 240, which would throw us over here, which this would be a negative over a positive, and that's why sine is negative of this situation. Just throwing that in for free. But if sine is negative 0.75, then cosecant of 4 would have to be 1 over negative 0.75. negative 1, approximately negative 1.33. Alright, there's a warm-up. Okay, slightly different variation of those previous examples. In the previous examples, if you remember, we were finding cotangent of things like this. So the degree measure or the radian was given to you and then you found the relationship. Now they're giving you the relationship and they're saying, hey, find the degree measure. Now I just have to say this, yes, you could easily take your calculator and go sine like this and it will just give you the answer. That is not the goal of this um, exercise. This exercise is supposed to force you to go back to the spinner, create triangles, practice your 30, 60, 90s, 45, 45, 90s, and some of you are frustrated, You're like, well, why can't we just use this? Because you didn't sign up for calculator class, you signed up for trig slash pre-calc. So we gotta understand the uh, meat and potatoes or how the engine works. Um, so with that being said, let's do it. So what you need to do is say, okay, where do I need to spin my spinner to create this situation? Well, if it's sine, that means this is my opposite side, negative, and that means this is my hypotenuse. Don't forget, my hypotenuse is always positive. So where is sine positive? Well, all students take calc. Sine is positive here, so we know it's not here. We know sine is positive here, so we know it's not there. So we need to investigate quadrant three and four. Now, if my opposite side is the square root of three, we should kind of be like, hey, I'm sniffing out a 30, 60, 90, and you're right. So if I do my best to understand that that's square root of 3 negative, that would make that my 60. That would make this 1, making that 2. Sign of this situation is negative square root of 3 over 2. But it also happens right over here. For that 60, negative square root of 3, there's my opposite, there's my hypotenuse. That's all I really need. So I'll throw this in for free, and there we have at least our drawing. And now we got to figure out how far do we need to spin our spinner to get there. And by the way, if you use your calculator, I believe you'd only get one answer. They might give you negative 60. Um, but if we look at this, we're going to spin our spinner 180 plus 60, which is 240. We're going to spin our spinner this far, which is 300. Now they might say negative 60, so that's true. And they might say to here, which is 90 plus this little smidge of 30, negative 120. So they might throw these in here. Positive spins take us there. 
negative spins take us there. So be on your guard for both spins, okay? Now with that in mind, let me get rid of that. And let's tackle problem number two. We take a peek at problem number two and we're like, wait a minute. That's looking like a 45, 45, 90 because of the square root of two. Now we got to use some extra thinking. What's cosecant the reciprocal of? It's the reciprocal of sine. So where is sine positive? All the students take the cup here and here. So it's not going to be here, not going to be here. So we know we're going to get answers in the first quadrant and the second. Well, let's take a stab and hope we're right by drawing a 45, 45, 90 in both of these quadrants. So this is telling us um, if cosecant is this, don't forget, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So cosecant is telling us that it's hypotenuse over opposite. So in other words, they're telling us they're telling us that the opposite is 2 and the hypotenuse, oh my goodness, give me a second, I might have written this one down wrong. Alright, so I got to own it. This isn't a math mistake, this is just me copying a problem on the board wrong. So the original problem has a 2 up here and the square root of 2 up here. It's the only way that it will really work as a 45, 45, 90. I won't bore you with those details. So i got to flip the script here. This is still true. This is still true. But now, the opposite side comes from... Yeah, comes from here, because the opposite side, by definition, in cosecant, is this bottom number, which is the square root of 2. The hypotenuse is 2. So... If I flip this to understand sine, I would say, okay, that means sine has to be the square root of 2 over 2. So regardless of how you look at it, my hypotenuse is 2, and my opposite is the square root of 2. And remember the rules for 45, 45, 90. I'm supposed to multiply the opposite side by the square root of 2 to get the hypotenuse. And it works like this. Okay, the way I had it, it didn't work as a 45, 45, 90. So, with that being the square root of 2, multiply that by the square root of 2, boom. Same thing happens over here. My opposite side is the square root of 2, and this would be a 2. Okay, so, how far did I spin my spinner to get these situations? 45 and 135. Now, negative, that would be negative 225 and negative 315 to create those situations. All right, we're going to end this video and create... One more, a part of two. Oh no, I can keep going. I didn't run out of time. So let's go down to example three. So example three, cosine negative one. Well, this takes us to our quadrantals. Because how could this be true? Well, our adjacent side over our hypotenuse must equal a negative one. How does that happen? That means this has to be the same number as this, like a seven and a seven or a 10 and a 10. But my hypotenuse is always positive. So I'm going to call this my negative 1. I'm going to call my hypotenuse 1. I'm going to say, well, where does that happen? Well, first of all, let's investigate this quadrantal situation. So at 0 degrees, I don't have any negatives. So that's got to be gone. At 90 degrees, I don't have any negatives. So that's gone. Over here, now wait a minute. I'm going to make this my negative 1, that's my 1, adjacent over hypotenuse. My opposite I don't really care about, but it's 0. But at that right there, 180 degrees, which is pi, is one of our solutions. Um, now if I went down here to 270 and investigate that, I notice that my adjacent side is 0. So my cosine of 270 would be 0, so that eliminates that. So the only answer to this problem is 180 degrees. But that also means I could spin my spinner negative 180, so negative 180 or negative pi. And again, I don't know if they're going to require you to think about the positives and negatives. Last one for this one. Uh, first of all, what's secant the reciprocal of? Cosine. 
So if secant's negative one and I take the reciprocal, I'm gonna get negative one. Well, that's the same problem as this, so these are gonna be my answers again, even though it's secant. All right, I'm gonna hit pause on the, well, stop on the video. If you like the video, like and just subscribe.